Hello and welcome to Forward Boldly. I'm your host, Christine Niles. Total war. The conflict between Hamas and Israel it has been in the news, many people weighing in. I am not here to pontificate about sides and the conflict and that sort of thing. I'm here to talk about the doctrine of total war versus just war. And why is that? Because I've been a little dismayed and disturbed by the response of certain Catholics uh, who claim to be devout, devout and faithful Catholics, responding responding to some of the aggression in the Middle East with what I would say is a disproportionate response that justifies acts that are entirely contrary to Catholic teaching, entirely contrary to the message of Christ. The Catholic Church has never supported total war. That doctrine is anathema to the church. And it's anathema to Christ himself, anybody who has ever read about the life of Christ, who knows even a little bit about the Gospels, knows that the idea of total war completely goes against Christ himself. And this is not coming from someone who's a bleeding heart liberal. I've never been a bleeding heart liberal. I've always supported just war. I've always supported the right of nations to defend themselves, but not by any means. There is such a thing as crossing the line in order to seek revenge, in order to avenge your country by doing the same evil acts as the ones who are attacking you. And I am, I, I have been a little disturbed uh, by the reactions of some so-called Christians uh, to the way that the conflict is, is being handled in the Middle East. I'm not here, again, to weigh in politically and take sides in the conflict between Israel and Hamas. Obviously, what Hamas did was absolutely despicable. That initial attack, the raping, mutilation, women, children, killing, all of that, absolutely evil and must be condemned. Israel has the right to defend itself, just as any nation has the right to defend itself. The controversy came when the Israel defense minister, Yoav Gallant, ordered a siege. Let's take a quick look at that soundbite. So as he said, a complete and total siege to the entire Gaza Strip, which has about 2 million people in it. Half the population are children. You can check out the demographics yourself. Half the population are children. The vast majority are Muslims. There are, however, about 3,000 Christians living in the area. They are locked in on all sides, um, nowhere to go, and according to the siege, dep deprived okay, of food, electricity, fuel, everything. Everything is closed. And as we heard him say, we are fighting human animals and we will act accordingly. Well, if you're applying that only to Hamas, I would agree. But it doesn't affect only Hamas. It affects the women, the children, the elderly civilians who are not in any way, shape, or form taking part in this. Some of them might be, might be, that does not apply to the entire population. Last I checked, what that is, is it's called genocide. That's what it's called. And just a few weeks ago, we were rightly condemning what, we were call, what people were calling the new Armenian genocide in Artsakh where the Muslim Azeris, Azerbaijan, they were blockading Artsakh in their aggression against that area and against Armenia, leading to the deaths of thousands of Armenian Christians in Artsakh. They weren't getting food, they weren't getting fuel, they weren't getting medicine, and thousands died. And we Christians rightly condemned that as another genocide, Muslim Azerbaijan blocking food, fuel, medicine, needed supplies to Armenian Christians leading to their deaths. Men, women, children, civilians. Rightly condemned that. And yet, Israel does it to the Gaza Strip, and it's okay. We do it to Muslims, and it's okay suddenly. 
It's all right. No genocide for Armenian Christians, but genocide towards uh, Muslims in the Gaza Strip. Now that's okay. Why? Because we support Israel at any cost and for any reason, because we're conservatives or whatever. Well, are we conservatives first or are we Catholics first? I'm a Catholic first. If you're watching this and you're a Catholic, you should be a Catholic first. Not an American first, not a conservative first, not a Republican first, not a Zionist first, not a leftist or a rightist or whatever you are. You should be Catholic first. And Catholic teaching always comes first. I'm going to read to you Catholic teaching on this point. The Catechism is very clear. 2314. Every act of war directed to the indiscriminate destruction of whole cities or vast areas with their inhabitants is a crime against God and man, which merits firm and unequivocal condemnation. A danger of modern warfare is that it provides the opportunity to those who possess modern scientific weapons, especially atomic, biological, or chemical weapons, to commit such crimes. Every act of war directed to the indiscriminate destruction of whole cities or vast areas with their inhabitants is a crime against God and man. When you lay siege to an entire area involving two million people, men, women, children, when you lay siege to that entire area, depriving them of food and water, fuel, electricity, and all needed supplies, that is an act of war directed to the indiscriminate destruction of whole cities or vast areas with their inhabitants. And according to the Catechism, it is a crime against God and man. There is no question that what Hamas is doing is a crime also against God and man. So this is not me taking sides and supporting one side over another before anybody jumps in and falsely accuses me. What I'm saying is our, the response doesn't make it right. Now, Israel clearly is not a Christian state. They're a Jewish state. And according to Jewish belief, an eye for an eye is still valid. Okay? They don't follow the teachings of Christ, obviously. They follow the teachings of Judaism. And an eye for an eye is valid. So according to their belief, it's perfectly fine what they're doing in accordance with their belief system. Here's the thing. Christians, it's not okay according to Christian standards, Christ teachings, which is why it's so shocking and dismaying to me how many so-called Christians support this, this idea of total war, which really just an act of revenge against an entire population of people, only a fraction of which consists of the terrorists who committed the attacks and atrocities against Israel. St. Jerome says ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. But looking at the plethora of online materials on scripture sometimes lends to greater confusion than clarity. But the good news is that Church Militant is offering an Ephesians master class. It's being led by Chris Plants. He has a master's degree in theology from the Franciscan University of Steubenville. He's taught numerous courses in theology, and he's going to give you an eight-week deep dive into the book of Ephesians. You don't have to spend months and months and months reading scripture, spending thousands of dollars. It'll be an eight week crash course, compelling, engaging, easy to grasp. Go to churchmilton.com forward slash Ephesians dash masterclass. That's churchmilton.com forward slash Ephesians dash masterclass to learn more. There were uh, so many comments on this on social media. So I'm just going to read a few of them. Cernovich, Mike Cernovich, he's a conservative commentator who is very blunt about where he stands. He doesn't always toe, you know, the conservative political line, which is great because you shouldn't always toe the conservative political line. You should think for yourself rather than always, you know, following a certain pattern of thinking that's dictated to you by a certain party or certain politics. You need to think for yourself, especially if you're Catholic, you follow Catholic teaching, not where your particular party um, you know, tells you to think. But this is what he said. So he posted this response from the Israel defense minister. And then he writes, pro-life Christians won't say a damn thing, will they? And the pro-life website, lifenews.com, which does a lot of great work, weighed in, saying, not sure we understand your question, but there's a big difference between defending yourself from acts of terror and purposefully killing a little baby. I responded and said, there are also women, children, and elderly, including Christians, who live on the Gaza Strip. 
Half the population of the Gaza Strip is children. Please don't tell me you support depriving them of food, fuel, electricity, etc. There is nothing pro-life about that. Life News responds to me. They say, we never supported that. No need to lie. All right, so very defensive response, immediately accusing me of lying. So my response was, you justified Israel's actions, which will include depriving women, children, elderly, including Christians, of food as, quote, defending against acts of terror. Where's the lie? As of this taping, no response from Life News because I didn't lie. They, they did walk into that and they did justify that. But then I got so many comments from people responding, the vast majority of which were defending this siege. I'm just going to read a few of these comments. So someone, Arlen Strader, says they're be- being given the opportunity to flee. Ridiculous. They literally have nowhere to go. They can't flee. They are locked on all sides. There's nowhere they can go. But many people were saying, oh, yes, well, they have the chance to flee and they were warned beforehand and so they should have gotten out there. Where are they going to go? Another person, my cat is in. They shouldn't be living in a terrorist country. No way would Hamas live side by side with a Christian. They'd rather rape and kill Christians as much as Israelis. Or didn't you know? War is hell especially when you choose to raise children among terrorists. So, so much to unpack in what this person said and so many, so much wrong in what this person said. Uh, they shouldn't be living in a terrorist country. Do you think a two-year-old has the choice where, whether or not he, where he's going to live? Do you think he has the choice? And how do you know that some of these uh, families are even able to leave the country? How do you know their, their livelihood, whatever their, their, their business is? You, you don't know in, individuals' particular situation and whether or not they can leave or not? What if their family has been there for generations and they don't want to leave? That doesn't mean that they therefore have, you know, you have now the right to kill these people simply because of the fact that they live there. And then they go on to say, no way would Hamas live side by side with a Christian. He'd rather rape and kill Christians as much as Israel's. Okay, that may be true. That's what our enemy does. And it's despicable. It's barbaric and it's cruel. True. Doesn't mean we get the right to stoop to their level and do the same thing to them or to innocent civilians especially, all right? There's no equivocation here. Then, of course, the obligatory quote, war is hell. War is indeed hell that does not give you the right then to commit war crimes just because war is hell. This is why war is hell. It's because people commit these crimes and target civilians in the process. We're not allowed to do that. We can't just say war is hell and then that justifies everything that we do. So at this point, it's just a totally empty, meaningless platitude used to justify any act of aggression or any crime in war. We as Christians, we can't do that. Steve says, everything that happens is Hamas's responsibility. Every dead child, every starving person, this is what they wanted. If it is your decision as a country to target an entire population, no, you cannot lay that, all of that at the feet of Hamas. No, you don't get to do that. So you cannot escape responsibility because you have chosen to commit this act against an entire population in retaliation for the attacks of a few terrorists. You take it out on the entire population. No, you don't, you don't get to make that excuse and then escape responsibility. And then this uh, individual, G.A. Drews, says, why should anyone provide them anything? Meaning anybody in the Gaza Strip. And so I just responded saying, so a three-year-old girl living in Gaza should be starved because Hamas did evil acts? That's what you're saying? And of course, as of this taping, no response. Ed Fieser, who's a very well-known Catholic philosopher, weighed in. He's always very level-headed, knows his Catholic teaching, and he said, A reminder for hot-headed friends on the right. Israel has the right and duty to retaliate against those responsible for the depraved attack it suffered. But the principles of just war, which are a part of the natural law, must be observed. And that includes refraining from any deliberate attack on civilians. The doctrine of total war is wicked, whether practiced by terrorists or by those fighting terrorists. He is 100% right. The doctrine of total war is wicked. The church has never supported the doctrine of total war. It is completely against 
the teachings of Christ. But an individual weighed in, someone who has published several books on history, Catholic, and he says, Phaser has his principles mixed up. Just war is a Catholic doctrine, Augustine. Natural law is a Catholic doctrine, Aquinas. Neither is binding on a Jewish state. Its handbook is the Old Testament, which permits total war, especially when that enemy adopts total war as the means of war. Phaser, crack a book. So my response was, there's a, there's a lot in that comment that's problematic, but my response said, is he's not saying it's binding on a Jewish state. He's saying that Catholics who support this should know better. Personally, I disagree with this guy. I think natural law does bind every single state. It's not as if only Catholics are bound by natural law. You know, I mean, natural law applies to everyone. Everyone has the law written on their hearts. It doesn't matter who you are. It applies to everybody. So it's not as if only Catholics are bound by natural law and, and, and everybody else is just free to do whatever they want to do. That doesn't even make any sense. But the point is that we as Christians can't support that. We can't support anything that violates Catholic principles of just war. And someone even tried to quote Romans 13.4 to justify this. What does Romans 13.4 say? This. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. He is the servant of God to execute his wrath on the wrongdoer. Okay. On the wrongdoer. How is a three-year-old Muslim child living in the Gaza Strip a wrongdoer who deserves execution? That is fundamentally the question. It's the targeting of innocent civilians, which a siege does. And almost very, very few people were willing to deal with this. Constant um, rationalizations and justifications and really an unwillingness to look at this right in the face and say, yeah, this is what we're doing and should we be doing it? Fortunately, some people understand Catholic teaching and understood this is wrong. We can't do this. Quite frankly, it's obvious. It's obvious. You don't target entire populations. This individual, Biru164, he, he did face this head on and he just basically said, yeah, we can do this. He says, it's justified regardless of the reason. Christians were killed in the bombing of German cities. So I'm just going to remind you of Catholic teaching. The church condemned the fire bombings of Dresden and Tokyo. Dresden was absolutely flattened. Hundreds of thousands of non-combatants, elderly men, women, children, killed in Dresden and Tokyo by us, the allies, the good guys. Churches always condemn this. Again, why? Every act of war directed to the indiscriminate destruction of whole cities or vast areas with their inhabitants is a crime against God and man. You do not target innocent civilians. That is basic. That's just basic human civilization. It's like the groundwork of human civilization. You just don't do that. Target military, absolutely. You target combatants, absolutely, but not innocent men, women, and children. In my previous episode titled Miracle of Hiroshima, I read testimonies from bombers who were, uh, who took part in the firebombing of Tokyo. I'm not talking about Nagasaki. I'm not talking about the atomic bomb. I'm talking about the firebombing of Tokyo, where, you know, approximately 100,000 people, civilians, died. And in Tokyo especially, because they have these paper and wooden homes, it went up in flames. I mean, incinerated immediately. And these people are talking about they're thousands of feet up in the air. They're dropping their bombs. And they said they were overwhelmed with the stench of burning human flesh because you've got 100,000 people down there literally being cooked to death through these bombs. And these people are these, these airmen said that they'll never forget the smell. They will never forget the stench. Just feeling the heat rising thousands of feet above this destroyed city and the stench of burning human flesh seared into their memories. And some of them, it deeply troubled their conscience as it should. The church has always condemned this. And Christians need to understand this, especially Catholics. 
You don't take a side and say, you do, I will support this side no matter what they do. No matter what, even if they lower themselves to the same barbarism and cruelty as their enemies, I will support them no matter what. That's never been the Catholic position. So this is what I, I, I mentioned um, on Facebook. Just a week ago, Christians were rightly condemning the blockade of Artsakh by Muslim Azerbaijan, leading to the starvation of thousands of Armenian Christians, calling it another Armenian genocide. Israel proposed, now proposes to do essentially the same thing to the entire population of Gaza by cutting off all food, water, fuel, and electricity. Women, children, and elderly, including thousands of Christians, will be affected, and Christians cheer Israel on. Apparently, it's bad when Muslims do it to Christians, but good when we do it to Muslims. Does a three-year-old Muslim child care about the reasons behind these hostilities? Does he deserve this? The bloodlust and revenge exhibited by some so-called Christians and the hypocrisy is disturbing. It shows a complete lack of understanding of Christian teaching. We rightly condemned the Armenian genocide being committed against the people of Artsakh rightly, and we should be condemning any anything even approaching that towards individuals living in the Gaza Strip. Just a reminder, I did an episode called Mary and Muslims. Our lady desi desires to save every single soul, all souls, okay? She desires to bring all souls to her son, Christ. I hope you're enjoying the show. The rest of the show is behind the paywall, so please go to churchmilton.com to watch the rest. For those who are not premium subscribers, you can sign up at churchbuilding.com forward slash go premium. See you there.